How weird. That's probably why loads of people get me to repair their stuff. Because I know what I'm doing and I'm amazing in every every sense of the word, I guess. Right, here we are then. So in today's video, we're gonna be quickly trying to go over this Sony KV1440UB. This is a 14 inch Sony Trinitron, something or other from, I don't know, the mid eighties or something. Has a scarp socket on the back. One of these things, what does RGB? So let's take a look at it. Here we are, here's our back, there's our power supply. It's a, not really switching, sort of a chopper. This is our tuner. And down there is uh, what does our video and um, scanning for the picture. So what's the fault with it then? Well, let's have a look. And here it has some kind of weird hiss where that's coming from it produces an amazing picture to be fair but we've got some hissing going on now the tube looks perfectly fine doesn't it, it looks really nice nice sharp picture and the convergence is a bit out but you know nothing to to moan and groan about if we uh, load this up it's not actually that far out i think it's reasonably acceptable you know that looks quite nice doesn't it Nice picture. So I'm going to solve this fault. It's filthy. But before we do any of that, I want to show you this. This is a recent donation to my lovely workshop. This is a BK Precision CRT tester. It's a 490. I don't know what that means. It's one of these things that has lots of different sockets with plug ins that go onto the end of this cable. And you can test your CRT. Now this one I think was in someone's shed or something because it was proper mouldy so I've had to clean it. Looks like it's had a lot of water damage. It works perfectly fine. I spent this morning calibrating it but we're going to see if I can make use of it on this CRT to check it. I don't have any of the, the information but you know it's easy to set up the cutoff uh, G2 volts and your G1. So with that being said I think the first thing we're going to do is disconnect it, unplug the SCART sockets, uh, discharge the tube and hook it up to the CRT tester. Wonderful. Let's do that. To be fair, it's not actually that filthy inside. No, none of that cigarette tar stuff. As a smoker, I find that horribly disgusting and off-putting, but you know, never mind. I can easily forget it. I think we've got the audio chip on there as well. So this does uh, RF front end and audio. There we are, look, that's how we set the drive for the red, green and blue cathodes. Nice 14 inch, well, 15 inch, 14 inch viewable Sony Trinitron tube. There's our power supply, as I mentioned earlier. Line transformer. We've got an integrated circuit somewhere down there. We've got an interstage transformer. Whip coil. I think that might be pin correction down there. I don't know. None of that needs to be adjusted, quite frankly. It's all it's all pretty well um, well in there. Got termination pack. I think that's what that is. Bunch of resistors connected to one side parallel together. Caps look all right. <sighs> okay, fine. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to get the um, this. And the idea with this, this is a multi-purpose tool. You can either probe that EHT with it, or you can short the EHT. And there's a resistor in here, I think it's like a couple megs or something. Short it in there, and it drains the residual EHT. That's more or less static, really, because of how hot the cathodes are after the heaters turn off. We're gonna connect this up. One end goes to chassis. The other end goes up the backside of that and this charges the tube. I'm going to do that now. Right, so that's off. And we're going to take off this uh, neck board, just like that. And if we come over to the CRT tester, we're going to drop this thingy down and we're going to pick out the one 
what fits the, the CRT. Doesn't look too burnt up in there. Okay, let's have a look at this base then. Let's see if I've got one of those. I'm sure I do. I think it's one of these. I think it's this one. Right, I will be back. I just need to double check. Right, well, that took an annoying amount of time to set up. It's my absolute fault that I don't have the right adapter. So I've used this universal thing, wired it in there. There we go. Marvellous, isn't it? Tests all right. No shorts. So our tube's all right. Because it took so fucking long to do it, I now actually have to go. I want to do a life test. I think the life test reduces the, the heater volts, but we can do that manually. So if we go down to setup, let's just drop the heater volts. Oops. Just a tad. Just below 6 volts. Set cut off. Do we have to do that again? Yeah, that's alright. Let's go. Doesn't look too bad. Pretty satisfied with that. I've not got the focus connected, so it's not going to do anything. And let's try and drop the heater bolts to... Um, about four, four and a half. Pretty strong tube. So where do these stop conducting? And you know, they they equally have aged as well, pretty much. We just drop the heater volts down a little bit more. About, I don't know, three volts, I think that's supposed to be. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, this tube is perfectly all right. Pretty much it's reading as a brand new tube. As you can see, it's, um, working perfectly fine. The video is 30 frames per second so the sync won't play with the camera. The sound so much more less than it was before. It's not coming from the transformer. There is a there is a high-pitched squeal which does come every now and again. There's a transformer that's on it and so the idea is the mains is isolated from it and this transformer is drive by tr little transistor switches and that's what generates all the voltages for the TV. I don't know if you can make that out but it's, it looks a bit like a flyback to be fair, it's just that thing in the middle. It's not arcing, a lot of, it did sound like it was arcing before but after I've done all this stuff to it. I mean I've adjusted the, the you've got a HT preset, I've adjusted it doesn't matter where it's adjusted it still it still does it I've checked all of the caps and stuff and it, there doesn't seem to be a, a problem with any of them they're not shorted quite frankly I don't know whether or not this would be considered normal for this TV I'm going to have more of a play around with it but I, I can't quite find any I mean there's no arcing coming from the transformer if we get a black image uh, just a black blank raster and turn all these lights off the telltale signs of a transformer arcing would be sort of seeing like bit flashes and things on the screen and i mean i can't see anything the refresh rate of the of the phone is it's picking up the vertical frequency but i mean if i turn the you see it's um You know, there's nothing there, so I'm not too sure. <clears throat> not too sure. I've given the main deflection PCB a good clean. It's a lot more nice than now. I've touched up all the joints on that as well. The power supply is where the fault is. It does sound like it's arcing, but it really isn't. And there's not many more places it could come from. Maybe the 
the scanning coils. I'll keep on at it and see if I can figure out where the, the what what actually is causing it. But there's no there's no definitive reason why it should be happening. There's no portraits. It certainly has gotten quieter. I don't know how that's coming across in the video. I mean, it's really loud before. It's arcing. I've seen it. It is actually coming from there. I don't know if you've just seen, if you can see any of this, but it's, um, it's flashing. Oh, it's just done it again, see? I don't know if that's moisture or what's going on, but it is actually coming from the transformer, the high voltage transformer. That is a shame. I don't know if I can fix that. Let's see if I can make it do it again. It's just done it again. Is there a crack on it? Right, well, it's get, it, the, the arcing is becoming a lot more frequent. So originally it was flashing over between that link next to the little resistor but you see now it's um yeah right. well at least we know where it's coming from. so this is an interesting development look at this but i've touched up the solder joints on this plug look at this this is what i've done i've put a coating over the line output transformer there we are, look, it's stopped again. Marvellous. So what happens when we put a video on it? So this is, uh, this is with a video feeding. There's no sound at all. And I just want to point out, the only thing I did was I coated the line output transformer. Um, I think there was moisture in it. I have independently run some current through it, but I've also put some sort of like a JB Weld type coating over the where where it was flashing over. But also look at this. It's not doing it anymore. It's very intermittent. So maybe it's the cable. But that's really odd. I mean because the type of power supply we have in here is a chopper if there's a bad connection we know this with line output circuits if there's a bad connection somewhere it will cause the transformer to ring the original prognosis might even be the case you know it's the resonance frequency of the chopper circuits but it could have also been you know line output sort of just moisture in it from where i've been sort of messing about but the fault's cleared up I have turned the HT down. I am going to keep it low. There's no point turning it up and overloading the supply if it means that it, there's more life now in the thing. There's so much life in the tube. I don't need to overpower it or run it at its designated HT. That's so weird. You see. But it's not flashing over to the wire. It is quite literally just a crap connection. It's taken up until now to get to, to find it. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm gonna leave it running for a bit. I get some pictures of my work, button it up, and I think this one's all done. Nice. So it's not even actually the cable at all. Take a look at this. Of course, it's not gonna do it now. I think it's this, it's the transformer itself, it's loose. Something is loose on this board. But you see, as, I, as I'm pushing, but I'm not, surely I'm not putting any weight on anything. I don't think it is this cable now. As I push down on this circuit board, you see, It stops and it's not arcing or anything 
it's quite literally vibrating, but it's coming from the transformer. I've baked the the PCB about a thousand times already, trying to get this uh, because I'm sure there was a cold joint on it to begin with, and there, I mean, there is. This is the fault. So, just for anyone out there, I mean, you, a lot of people would assume it's just the flyback, wouldn't they? and they'd condemn the TV. In fact, I nearly did, but I thankfully repaired the fault with the flight. There were two individual things. The fault with the flyback came later, but I caught that. I caught that before it could manifest into something else. This resonance frequency thing is coming from the PSU. And you know, as soon as I touch it, it just stops. So I don't know, I'm gonna need to figure out what to do. There's only two things I'm pushing down on, that thick resistor, which isn't doing anything when I push down on it separately, but something here, it's the transformer. It's the uh, switching, the chopper transformer. How weird. Well, for anyone else, that would have just been a condemned flyback line transformer. They would have just, ooh, they would have spent ages changing all the caps to find out that they either did it all wrong or it still didn't work, you know. And this is what I mean, this is when diagnosing really does come into its own field. That's probably why loads of people get me to repair their stuff, because I know what I'm doing and I'm amazing in every, every sense of the word, I guess. Sorry, I'm tearing my own, own horn, but I, you know, should be able to. I've, uh, I've done a good job here, I found the fault. This would have been an irreparable fault for anyone else. I'm just amazing. Right, so this is the um, glued core. I used some clamps to hold the core down really tightly because it was quite obviously loose. So the idea was that the the metals that they used on these cores, they break down, they expand due to the heat and they crack and they disintegrate. So I've glued it back on using JB Weld and I've actually, I've not even left it for the full 24 hours, but it's hard enough. I wanted to give it a test and I think you'd be as surprised as I am. I mean, there's a bit of a hiss, quite frankly. There's a there's a very very slight hiss, but it's actually coming from the speaker, which I think is the most hilarious revelation ever. Look at that man! Not that difficult, fault in terms of what what it is and to fix it, and the exact same for the line transformer too. But hell, it took a while to get there. Anyway, so that's all done now. I'm just so surprised that this core was the fault all along. It was staring me right in the face. It's just so, it's such a shame. I couldn't see the crack in it. I couldn't see the crack at all. And I bet you it's the same material they, they've they used on the core for that line output transformer, which is why that was breaking down too. That's amazing, man. Well, that's all done now. I think I'm going to do one last shot of the whole thing back together tomorrow morning. And I think I'll call this one done. I am going to turn the HT up. Actually, you know, I'm not. I'm going to leave the HT preset just exactly where it is. And um, yeah, call this one done.